Science fiction is replete with stories of world-ending catastrophes, from I Am Legend, where Will Smith plays Robert Neville in an action-packed race to find a cure for the super plague that has wiped out most of humanity, or On the Beach, a heartbreaking tale of how the people in the Southern Hemisphere choose to spend their last remaining months after a catastrophic nuclear war in the North. Almost every eventuality has been covered. But how would the world itself actually fare? without the human race. But would it be possible for the Earth to recover from the untold damage that we as a species have caused? Well, let's dig in, shall we? Firstly, we should point out that in the hypothesis proposed in today's video, the human race has not been wiped out by some cataclysmic nuclear war or meteor strike which would inevitably take out most if not all other life along with it. Today we're going to be exploring what would happen if only the human race was eradicated, be it by some form of new disease that targets only humans or some sort of exceptionally widespread alien abduction. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. Power stations and other infrastructure. Look, firstly, we need to address a commonly held misconception about the safety of nuclear power plants. Many people watching this video may be of the opinion that the proposed hypothetical situation that we speak of is an entirely moot point and that left unattended, all of the world's nuclear power plants would go critical in a matter of days. And despite what the fantastic show The Last Man on Earth will tell you, this isn't the case. We actually talked all about this on another video on another channel called Into the Shadows, which is a lot darker than this one. You can check it out if you want to get a little bit depressed. Nuclear power plants are designed and built with so many fail-safe systems that this just wouldn't happen. Left unattended, nuclear power plants will enter a shutdown phase on their own accord and remain dormant until such a time as they are reactivated. And because of this, there is little to no chance that should the human race vanish overnight, the rest of the world would be almost immediately rendered uninhabitable due to nuclear fallout. However, nights would become dark very, very quickly. With power stations, both nuclear and otherwise, shutting down across the world, it wouldn't be long before there was simply not enough electricity available to supply the grid and things like streetlights would fall dark for the final time and millions of tons of frozen food would begin to thaw and putrefy. That is assuming the grid lasted as long as the power stations, a rapidly aging system that is in dire need of a complete overhaul. The grid requires constant maintenance in order to remain active. Obviously, maintenance would not be forthcoming if there was nobody left to carry it out. It's not all bad news, though. With all the world's power stations offline, many of which still require the burning of fossil fuels to function, greenhouse gas production would greatly decrease. Pets and livestock. A world with no humans would undoubtedly be exceptionally beneficial to wild animals, with rats, raccoons, foxes, and other scavengers standing to benefit pretty greatly, at least in the short term, because there'd be just an abundance of unguarded and, in some cases, rapidly thawing food. However, the outlook for pets, zoo animals, and livestock is going to be really, really bleak. We're sorry, but your dog is probably not going to make it. Assuming, as we are, that whatever it is that wiped out the human race came on very quickly, it's highly unlikely that any form of worldwide euthanasia program would be put in place or actioned. This means that those house pets, zoo exhibits, and animals being held in captivity and raised for slaughter are going to die a slow, horrendous death from either starvation or dehydration, depending on what they ran out of first. So be glad that you just got raptured. In a few short weeks, the world would be in the hands of those animals capable of surviving on their own. Environmental Improvements With humans no longer burning huge amounts of fossil fuels in order to dry, fly, or produce electricity, air quality around the globe is going to rapidly increase. This is one of the few predictions contained within this scenario that could be actually backed up with physical evidence. During the first COVID-19 lockdown, an organization known as Frontier Economics carried out extensive measurements of nitrogen dioxide levels in London. Using a complex machine learning algorithm, they were able to predict a so-called business-as-usual projection for the year 2020. Taking into account a number of factors such as temperature, wind speed, etc., this algorithm was able to successfully predict pollution levels for the first three months of the year. However, once the first lockdown came into effect and the amount of traffic on the roads was greatly reduced, the actual nitrogen dioxide levels fell way below those predicted by the algorithm. Although these levels did not drop quite as much during the second lockdown, if we take a look at traffic records during this period, oh, we can see that the smaller drop was in direct correlation uh, with the number of cars on the road. And don't forget, 
This was just in London, and only over a short period. Imagine the worldwide atmospheric benefits that would occur if nobody ever burnt fossil fuels again. It's not just air quality that's going to improve either. With no more greenhouse gases being pumped into the atmosphere, the Earth would very slowly begin to cool. Although the latest predictions claim that it could take several thousand years for the Earth's surface temperature to return to those of the pre-industrial era, it would happen. The residual carbon dioxide in the atmosphere would eventually be absorbed by the ocean and ultimately become trapped in the sediment at the bottom. It may take another thousand years or so, but the ocean temperatures would eventually cool enough to halt and then reverse the damage done to the polar ice caps and the Greenland ice sheet. Wildlife. Look, as anybody with a garden will tell you, trees, bushes, and plants do really well when humans stop dealing with them. Left unchecked, there is no reason to believe that plants would not very quickly start reclaiming the ground taken from them by deforestation and urban expansion. Eventually, rainforests would begin to expand, and cities would vanish beneath blankets of moss, ivy, and other such tenacious plant life in much the same way as a scab covers a healing wound. The wound of humanity. This explosion in plant life would, in a small way, accelerate the removal of excess carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. As for the animals, apart from those in captivity that we already mentioned, their fortunes would certainly take a turn for the better. The inevitable spike in rats and other vermin would provide more food for those animals higher up the food chain, and this in turn would lead to greater numbers of those predators being born and surviving to adulthood. Perhaps most importantly, all those animals currently teetering on the brink of extinction due to poaching, overhunting, and unsustainable fishing practices would finally be given a chance to replenish their numbers. For example, there are believed to be approximately 5,000 black rhinos currently alive today. This is definitely an improvement from, say, 1995, when they were estimated to be only half that number, but the species is still critically endangered. This number uh, would greatly increase if they were not being routinely killed by poachers so that powdered rhino horn can be sold to those who believe that it has medicinal properties. Similarly, due to increasing worldwide demand, seafood such as tuna and swordfish are very close to becoming extinct, and if all fishing suddenly stopped, it is highly likely that such species would make a full recovery. Aside from those animals being eaten, ground up for medicinal purposes, or both, endangered primates such as gorillas, bonobos, and chimpanzees would all greatly benefit from the sudden halt in deforestation. Although they are often poached for meat, the greatest risk to their future survival is the destruction of their habitat. As the rainforest gradually healed and expanded, this would become less of an issue and would likely lead to greater numbers of these incredible creatures. What we left behind. So, what about all the sh that we just left behind before our rapture. Well, is it possible for the world to completely recover from everything that we've done to it? Well, the answer is, yeah, probably, but it's gonna take a long ass time. Given that every molecule of plastic created since 1907 still exists somewhere in the environment, the amount of time that it would take for all of Earth's rubbish to be rendered harmless is likely going to run into the thousands if not tens of thousands of years. And that's before we take into account the huge amounts of spent nuclear material that we've just buried underground or in actually many cases just stored above ground in casks while uh, waiting for people to figure out what we do with all that. There seems to be no general consensus with regards to how long it will take for this waste to reach a stage where it could no longer pose a risk to anything living. Estimates seem to range anywhere from 10,000 years to 1 million years, with the greater likelihood being placed on the latter. It would appear that even if the human race vanished today, the resultant natural clear-up operation would take far, far longer than the amount of time that humans have been on the Earth. So, would the world be a better place without us? Based on the scenario that we presented today? The answer is, well, yeah, kind of obviously, right? Look, although our immediate eradication would result in the comparatively short-term suffering of some animals, many of whom have been suffering for their entire lives, this downside would be entirely eclipsed by the manifold benefits. Without the human race, the Earth could finally begin to heal from the damage caused by, well, arguably, the worst plague in its existence. Thanks for watching. That was depressing.